guys, welcome back to another episode of Sleeping Giants, Red Star Belgrade, nearly forgot it again, don't know why. Right, so in our last episode we had that pretty poor performance really against FK Partizan in the local derby, not really making up for the, well not really made up for the fact that we beat them the first time around because it's disappointing. Um, I was a little bit shocked with the horrific quality of our defending in that game. Um, so yeah, that was a thing, but... We move on. Um, we were still miles ahead of them in the league anyway, so it wasn't too much of a big deal. And we're going to talk through what's happened in today's games, and yeah, let's get straight into things. First match of the month was against Mladost, and frankly, it was just one of those yet more exercises in brilliance. And Avramovsky has been absolutely superb for us this year. We found ourselves 3-0 up inside seven minutes in this one, through Lazovic, Avramovsky, and then of course, Strack Attack, Strakwalersi. And from then on, it was like, well, okay, we'll just take what we can. At this point, I actually decided to just try and go for it and see if we could get a few more goals. We did, of course, as Avramovsky scored another one on 23 minutes. He has been really prolific in front of goal with eight in the league in 15 starts, which is pretty damn good for him, really. I think he's got a lot of potential. I'm really happy with our options in that shadow striker role. Um, They did get one back through Neboisha Gavridge, but then we cancelled that out in the end with Georgi Despotovic coming off the bench to score a decent goal. In terms of match stats, click-up chances, two apiece, but we had seven half chances and were definitely the better side, you have to say, in this game. We deserved to win comfortably, and we did, which was key for us. Now, something I did want to say, actually, was um, we've got one tactic at the moment, and we could probably do with another one. So if you've got any ideas of a different tactic we can play uh, for next season, that not to play all the time, but just as a backup tactic or as a separate one that we can sort of switch between. Or maybe two tactics. Heck, I'd like to get a, a full plethora of three tactics going, like we've got in Pompey, so we can really have a decent set to choose from. I'd like to have one with two strikers, because I just want to play a two-striker tactic and get it working. So if you've got any ideas of how we can play a two-striker tactic, go for it. Let me know. I'm looking at you, Funkstar. Um, and... Any other ideas for tactics that you might want to see us do? Maybe one where we've not got attacking wingers. Maybe we have them as midfielders on the wide. I don't know. Any ideas of ways you could think that we could use it in Europe next year? Because we're obviously going to be against better sides again next year. We're not going to be able to strengthen that much. We'll be able to strengthen, but not to the point where we can compete just yet. But So if you've got an idea of a tactic we can maybe use in Europe against some of the bigger teams, then go for that as well. I want one tactic that we can use to absolutely obliterate the league. Um, just dominate and score loads and loads of goals. That's the plan there, because... We may as well um, see if we can get some ridiculous league records going after a while when we get to the point where we're really building. And another one that can help us against some of the bigger sides. So if you've got any ideas, drop them in the comments. I'm always up for listening to those. It's, I know fuck all about tactics. And apparently I know fuck all about a lot of things because apparently in an episode yesterday uh, that went out yesterday, that is, uh, or the day before now because, of, yeah, you know what I mean though. Um, I actually said something along the lines of defence is the best form of attack. So yeah, um, don't follow that advice. Please don't follow that advice. That is bad, bad advice. Um, I can't remember whether it was this or Pompey I said it in, but Jesus. Um, I don't always think when I'm speaking when I'm doing these commentaries. Sometimes you're just saying things, and sometimes things like that come out of your mouth. So there you go. I expect some more of those uh, gems, I say, uh, in the future. Anyway, in our next game, we had a really disappointing performance against Voivodina. I was a little bit pissed frankly, and it clearly so were our players. Um, we had a woeful afternoon there. Um, Lazar Veselinovic put them in front on 12 minutes and disappointing defending from us again. They were able to just walk through the back, similar to how they did, uh, how Partizan did. And yeah, Ivanic made it 2-1, 2-0 uh, to them. And 25 shots, nine of which were on target. I'm sorry. Like, okay, we had two click out chances apiece, so maybe level there, but uh, I don't know how we lost this, let alone 2-0. How do they keep a clean sheet against that? That was absurd. But they did, and we lost, which was a shame. Thankfully, uh, Partizan, still stumbling, managed to get a draw in that game, which meant in our last game against Napoli, a game which we probably could have drawn or lost, we actually won 4-1, just because that's how this game works. Um... Vukan Savicevic actually started this game. It's his first game for quite some time, and he scored twice. That shadow striker role is absolutely dominant for us, whether it's Savicevic playing there, or Avramovsky, or hopefully in the future, uh, Tufedzic. It's just been dominant. Alexander Kovacevic put us in front, um, well, sort of from a corner, sec second phase from a corner. That's why he was up there, but he's useful for that kind of thing. Um, but then Strin uh, Strahinia Petrovic leveled them, uh, leveled the game up, and it was it was disappointing from us, really, when uh, players are able to win a header like that. It, it was just poor defending, really, from us. But 
put ourselves straight back in front again for Vukan Savicevic. That man again is getting involved with a lot of things for us, and it's good to see. And then, of course, Hushti was able to sneak in. In fact, Hushti had an amazing game. He actually got two assists and a goal for himself. So clearly, there's something to be said for this Hungarian wing maestro. And then, of course, Savicevic, as you can see, made it 4-1. But when you look at the stats, they had more clear-cut chances than us. And more half chances. I mean, it could have been... It could. I don't think we deserve to win that on 4-1. As much as we did have more shots, but still, we were just more clinical. And that's great to see that we're actually putting the ball in the back of the net. And that all brings us to today's game against FK Rad. Now, the key thing about the today's game is this. We are currently 10 points above FK Partizan with four games to go. Uh... I don't know how the head-to-head -head thing would work out now. Probably, uh, I don't know. It's tough to say because we both scored four goals. We beat them at home and they beat us at home. So there's no away goals. Oh, except we scored two goals away from home. So maybe it goes to away goals. I don't know. Uh, that might mean that we still have the advantage on head-to-head. -head. I really don't know how that works. If you do know how that works in Serbian football, please let me know. Uh, apparently, we've already wrapped up the Europa League spot. <laughs> Lovely. But... The key thing about today's game is if we win, we're champions. If we lose and Partizan... Look, basically, we have to better Partizan's result. If we better Partizan's result today, we're champions. Lovely old job. Right, so that's basically all we have to do today. And Rad aren't a bad side, though. That's not, you know, beat around the bush here. They're sixth in the league. And in that big pack of teams, really, that are below us. I mean, it's such a tight... You could jump so far. I mean, between 10th and 5th, there's just five points. And this is the last day of the season. Uh, not the last of the season. What am I talking about? There you go. There's one of those things. Um, so let's see who Partizan are playing. They're against. Uh, they're actually playing Vozdovac. So you'd feel that they probably would win that. But then this is Partizan, and they've messed up all kinds of things this year. Something else, which is a frustrating thing, is the fact that um, we've just had the thing come around about you know voting for Player of the Year because in Serbia you managers get to vote for the Player of the Year, and apparently Yorda is the favourite. I know he's the top, well, second best scorer in the league, but. He's not anywhere near as good average rating-wise as Darko Lazovic, so I don't understand why he's the favourite. Yes, he's scored more goals because he's a striker. I, I don't get that at all. Last year it was... Uh, oh, God, who was it that won it last year? I think it might have been Savicevic, actually. point is he won it miles, miles clear. I, I don't know what the problem is with that, but it's a pain. Let's just take a quick look at the squad. So, top goal scorer for us at the moment, of course, is Bosancic, but Spotovic is in there with... it. Uh, 16 and Avramovsky and Strakulersi have nine apiece. Assist wise, Lazovic has 14 assists and nine goals, and he's not being considered the favourite for player of the year. For me, that's bollocks. Um, but also 13 assists for Avramovsky, 12 for Gavric, 10 for Peshnik, who's now, of course, got Ebola, it would seem. Um, and Vukan Savicevic has nine, which is pretty damn good. Nine and nine in the amount of games he's actually played is fairly damn good. Um, Obviously, Peshnik has made a lot of substitute appearances. Player of the match, Avramovsky now is up there with Savicevic, who, of course, got player of the match in the first game he came back. He's just unstoppable. Uh, pass rating is Hushti with an 88%. That lad can keep the ball, which is great. Yellow card, uh, Kovacevic and Jovanovic have seven apiece. And as for the Reds, it's just that early burst of hilariously shitty defending from Darko Lazic that caused him to get those. Uh, Vukan Savicevic still has the best overall there, but he's not played anywhere near as many games as Darko Lazic. So, let's get into today's game. Um, ooh, four. Oh, they're playing that system I hate playing against. So this could actually go quite badly for us if we... Just a quick pick to Spotovic and Gozic. Is, is Jovanovic... Is Kovac... Uh, yeah, you're right. He's not very fit. Okay, well, it will have to be that system. But Savicevic will start. Decent fitness levels. Now, I really think a good performance out of him today would be key for us. That's the tactic we're currently playing. You can see the roles down here. And those are the current instructions that we're currently using for the tactic that we currently have. I'm saying currently way too many times. And we're flexible, attacking, lovely. And yeah. So if you've got any ideas for the tactics I was on about earlier with a two-striker one and one to play against the big European sides, then let me know. And we'll try and work that out over the summer because it's going to be a really fun summer transfer window because we get to go and sign people finally thank god because it looks like we're actually going to get some decent transfer funds this year i don't know the exact number yet or anything but come on we've earned a lot of money this year i'd be surprised if it isn't a couple of million quid like three or four million would be ideal if it's anything less than sort of three or four million i'd be a bit disappointed really but only time will tell we've still got some good players coming through so it's not all a bad thing if that is to be the case but i would much rather bring in a few players we definitely need another center mid because basanchez is great but he's the only one we've got and that's worrying we need another Defensive mid, probably a new striker, um, and 
some backup defenders. I, we just need to start strengthening now, basically, now that we can. Um, but that's all we're going to be something we'll do with in that episode. I'm going to spend as much time as I possibly can and get it all done before the new computer arrives. Now then, let's just see. Right, so we're 10 points clear. A win here will do it for us, basically. That will win us the league, and that is all I really care about right now, is wrapping up the league, getting our first piece of silverware on the board, since we're not going to win the cup thanks to that horrific game against... Uh, was it Basque? I think it was. Yeah, terrible times. Right, let's see what we can do. Maybe Savicevic will turn into the... Well, not turn into. He's pretty much been a hero for us in every game he's played. First game back after a ridiculous length of time out of injury. Scores twice. Just, he's unstoppable. And that's why I like him so much. He and Avram... And we've got Avramovsky on the bench too. That is quite a partnership to be able to bring someone on of that kind of quality when they've been as good as they have in that role. If, if anything, that shadow striker role has been more important for us this year than the strikers have. Not to mention, not to take away from the fact that Despotovic has chipped in with as many goals as he has. Oh, good ball. Lazovic here. Can he knock it back across? No, he can't. Petkovic, ball all the way across and it's cleared away again. And going to be brought away here by FK Rad. So we're not looking to... Oh, what a pass. Oh, please don't let him score from that. Oh, great save from Harriman. But that was an absolutely stunning pass. Wish we could play some passes like that. Although we're rarely in situations to play those passes because often we've got the ball in and around their box. So we're getting a lot of possession so far. We'll see if that holds true. If it does, we'll start really working that ball into the box. We're certainly looking the better side so far, but we haven't got the lead in this game. And that's the key thing here. Lazovic, can he get into the centre? There's Basancic, there's loads of players and lots of space in the centre of the pitch. Savicevic, out wide to Lazovic. Can he get the ball on the return? Ball up all the way across for Hushti. Dropped it down and, oh, good, he's hit the crossbar with that. I don't know how, but he has. Hushti there, proving to be a danger man, coming in at the far post, almost like a sort of round type of player, um, which is a role I've yet to exploit or use at all because I really don't fully understand it just yet. I know it's sort of like what Cristiano Ronaldo does, apparently. I don't really know. But Sanchez with the ball in and it's cleared away again. He's still our top scorer, remember, in all competitions this year, and that is impressive to have a centre mid as your top scorer. It's like having Lampard in your team. Out wide here to Antic. Can he get a good ball in? He can. Despotovic with the header and it's hit the post again. Christ, we've hit the post twice now in this game in the first 20 minutes, but we are definitely looking like the better side and that's all that really matters to me. But we need to be a little bit more accurate with our shooting. If we can sort that stuff out, we will be cooking on gas. Ooh, we are getting a lot of possession of the ball. But... No, um, Might be too early to start... I am actually going to get stuck in, get some tackles in. Start hassling them a little bit. This has worked for me at times on the Pompey save, so we'll see if we can get a few tackles in. Maybe try and hassle them off the ball a bit more. Don't want to get anyone sent off, and Darko Lazic is... He's not playing, so we're all right there. He's not going to do something silly. Uh, the last thing we need is an injury to Savicevic. Again, that would be horrible. Ooh, nil nil, surprising. But as far as I know, and I'll have to check this here, the, the Partizan aren't winning either. I didn't see anything, and that's not because they haven't scored. It's because I wasn't looking, frankly. I was busy looking at the match. Um, let's take a little look. Latest scores. No, what is that? Not what I want. Latest score. Whoa, okay. Um... So, our oh, partisan are actually 2-0 up, so um, we really do need to kick on and win this game. I don't know if a draw would be enough. A draw would put us... No, that would put us eight points clear. We need to win this one, basically. So, we need to come up with a goal in the second half to win the title. Come on. Anyone. Be a hero. Um, don't lose, though. That would be terrible. We haven't been so great away from home. We probably do need to... I might actually just go on control, just to be wary of them. We're going to stay try and exert as much leverage over them as possible but we can't do that if we've got too much emphasis on counter-attack because they may well end up being able to counter us hushti can he shoot nope bosanchic can he shoot savicevic can he shoot somebody fucking shoot they have it's lazovic it's one nil to red star belgrade thank god for that and savicevic will take an assist on that so he's just <laughs> he's gonna be so good if we can keep him fit next year he and avramovsky and we'll have enough depth in that area. That is one area that we do not need to strengthen. So Vizovic and Avramovsky are both excellent players and we've got Tufedzic to come in and I really want him to come in. So yeah. And Lazovic just proving yet more reasons why he's the best player in the league this year. Scoring goals, getting assists and his average ratings are usually very, very high. We could do with the second goal just to try and wrap this game up. Here's Lazovic, drops the ball out wide to Pekovic. Pekovic with a long cross and Despotovic at the far post and it is in the net. That is 2-0 in very quick succession. Georgi Despotovic for his 17th goal of the season. I 
that was a decent that's a great crossing from Peckham. You might notice that the graphics quality is slightly improved. That's because I'm messing around with a slightly better setting and it does seem to be okay at the moment. Um, it will be a lot better, of course, when the new computer's here. But for now, enjoy it. <laughs> um, toodle up now, though. Looks like we are heading towards the title, but we could still screw this up yet. We are on control now, though. So we shouldn't be... Oh, right. Oh, what are you do? Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Sorry, I had all the emotions at once there. Good ball. Ah... They keep getting sucked to the ball. Have we got closed down more on? No, we don't. Okay. Uh, no, we're fine. That's it. Yep, you can shoot from that range all day, if you like. Probably about time we made a substitution. We're two goals to the good here. We are probably going to win the league now, unless we concede two goals. But then again, we're more than capable of doing that. But, uh, yeah, we just need to get a foot in on some of these. Hmm. Maybe we could do with dropping a little actually if they're just going to shoot from that kind of range they're obviously on shoot on site or something and they can see from a long way out that is what i've learned oh well i'm actually going to set this up to change anyway um i'm going to bring on kovacevic even though he's one of the least fit players because gojic is on a yellow card and that's an important role for us at the moment and as much as he's knackered he's still fitter than he is so yeah but Sanchez with the ball in cleared but really poorly to Bosanchic. can he pick a pass he can Despotovic shot and well saved by Petrovic that's like our first clear cut chance of the game I think probably should have done better there Despotovic could have had his 18th goal of the season I'd like to see him at least finish with more goals than our centre midfielder you know he's done well but we need a striker that's going to be getting 30 odd goals for us a season that's really what we need at this level really if we're going to be winning the league every year and challenging for Europe we want to have a striker that's going to get us 30 goals a season um, it's as simple as that. Oh, go on. You've got that. You've got this. Oh, come on. You oh, got to do better than that. Just as well he can't finish because otherwise we'd be in a little bit of trouble here. Right now, go to it. And a ball in behind again. And he's been caught out there and he's going to get back across, thankfully. Oh, don't foul him. Please don't foul him. Oh, oh what a save. I can't see the ball properly right. Here. We've managed to get away with it and it's a free kick to us. That's even better. But they've had a couple of chances later on. Look, they've actually had three clear cut chances in this game. Uh, right. Who can we bring in? I'm going to bring on Gavrich for Hushti because he's just not particularly fit. But Sanchez just doesn't have the stamina at the moment, unfortunately. And this is my problem because we don't have anyone really. Or actually, yes, we do. Yes, we do. I'm going to bring him on in a sec, actually, when we get to around about 80 minutes. In fact, screw it, we'll do it now. Avramovsky, because he's not been used up front, not up front, but in that shadow striker role, he can actually play here relatively well, as can Kovacevic, but... We still need to sign some players in that particular centre mid kind of area. Um, and we could do with a couple more strikers, really, if we're going to play two strikers in games from time to time. We could definitely do with two because we've got just Despotovic and Strakulersi now. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a relatively comfortable 2 0 victory. We've rode our luck a little bit at times, though. Rad have had their chances. Just clear the ball. Just clear the ball. Now there's like seven of you. It looks like a dog pile. Come on, there we go. Right. A good bundle there. Right, so that's it, I think. Well, it must be. Uh, we're three games to go. We're ten points clear of Partizan, and we are champions. Champion! Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm tempted, but I'm not going to do that. Ah, right. There we go. Some positive things. That's good to see. Some positive things. So there we have it, lads. Um, next game, we've still got a few episodes, a few games left. So we've got some games against slightly... I say we're slightly weaker opposition. Radnicki aren't bad. In fact, they're third. And Donji Strem are seventh. But I might still try and rotate the squad for those games. Give some of the youngsters a bit of a run out. Um, get them some first team football. Some chances to score some goals. You know how it is. Every little chance we get like that. With the last few games of the season where we've wrapped up a title. I'm always going to put some of the youngsters out. Even if we lose the games. I'm more interested in sort of seeing how they would cope. And just giving them a little bit of first team experience where I can basically. So guys, if you like what you've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode for us winning the title, at least. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to hear more on that, please feel free to just subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Red Star Belgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I'll see you guys in the next episode for the last day of the season and the Donjish Rem game. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.